Today we are here to interview Ms. Nahid Shalimi, the Afghan artist, philanthropist who have some vital projects for Afghan women empowerment and street children in Afghanistan. Let us hear more from her about her work and activities. Thank you to giving us interview chance for interview. As a first question, I would like to ask: uh, You are an artist, uh, philanthropist, sportswoman, and social activist. Uh, how do you manage uh, uh, so much activities? <laughs> I also wish sometimes that a day would be um, more than twenty-four hours because there's so much more I want to do. The um, I think whatever you do in life, you have to be really passionate about it. If there is no passion, um, nothing. You can you cannot achieve something um, well. You can't do it well. Um, I love what I do. I, um, as an Afghan, I've always been drawn back to Afghanistan. Although I left Afghanistan when I was very young, I was eleven, and we walked out of the country literally on foot. Um, coming back after so many years and visiting uh, what I remember as the holy place of my childhood. Uh, was the hardest thing to swallow. Um, I've always done uh, philanthropic work or human rights work or especially women's work um, all over the world and not only for Afghanistan but, but around the world. Um, of course as, as an Afghan again my heart throbs for this country. Whenever I come here and I do uh, whatever tiny little project whether it's a workshop or some kind of a some kind of a consulting that, that I find is nothing, 10 minutes, half an hour, a day, half a day, I see the results right away. And that's what motivates you to come back. Because you see so much hungry hearts of women, of children, um, of young people that want to do more than what they do right now. And they need our help. Because we had the opportunity or the, the luck to be able to go and educate ourselves outside of Afghanistan while there was a war here. So I always say that it's our responsibility as a human being, as an Afghan, to come back and actually give it back to this to the, to the, to the soil because this is the, the land that gave me a soul. Um, my heart really, really um, gets filled when I do the work that I do um, with women, especially uh, with street children, um, and especially with sports, um, now that I'm, I'm really keen on that, um, I would really like to develop uh, some kind of a, an umbrella, some kind of a net for the women athlete um, that, that are in Afghanistan that need a lot of help and they need a lot of attention. And I think that uh, with the network that I have, maybe I would be able to help them a little bit. Uh, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, but um, but how do I manage it? I don't know. You just don't think about it. You just go and do the work because that's what I love. I really love what I do. Uh, as I know, you are involved in many humanitarian humanitarian projects uh, in Afghanistan. How important is for Afghans settled abroad to contribute to the country? I think it is extremely important. I think um, we um, the ones that 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 have the know-how. Um, and it doesn't matter which which field of society, whatever that you are are doing or whatever that your your profession is, you can come back and contribute to this country. Um, I think that um, it gives. I think this country. I truly believe that this country can be built with Afghans, um, with the knowledge that we all have, and if we can combine. The, the people that have left Afghanistan and have all of this knowledge and bring it all back and the people that have the knowledge on the ground in Afghanistan and kind of bring them together and this puzzle will be, you know, fitting perfectly. And that's what we need. But um, again, I go back to, to saying the same word, you got to coexist. You have to be able to coexist together. Um, we have to stop thinking about the, the, um, the different um, folk groups, the different um, ideologies that we all have. Um, it is okay to be competitors, but yet coexist together, you know, and this is this is what people have to uh, realize in Afghanistan also that you can be um, Not necessarily enemies, but competitors 
and still work together in order to make the society better, because this is the only way. We Afghans can build this country, no one else. As uh, you mentioned, you are uh, started a new project uh, called Coexist. Can you tell us more about uh, how you want to implement it in Afghanistan, in this project? Um, uh, actually, I'm, there's, the reason why I am here this time is mainly because uh, to launch Coexist in Afghanistan. Um, I always, I always say the reason, I mean, the fact that I am an Afghan um, makes a huge difference um, in this country for me. Um, thank God I have had the uh, privilege of being, getting, I mean, being successful in what I do in Europe and um, in North America. But um, to have this, uh, to have this project launch, uh, the launch of this project in Afghanistan uh, is extremely important because it's an inspirational uh, project. It's a very positive project, not only to the world because it's an international project, um, but especially for Afghanistan, because coexistence in Afghanistan is as important as coexistence within the world. We have to come together within Afghanistan to build this country, and only that way we can come into the little circles around the world as well and then look at the huge uh, uh, picture, the globe, and to coexist together. If you can't really coexist amongst you, um, yourselves, within a country, within a society that is this small, in a global you know, era, how do you expect to coexist in the whole world? I, 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 we were t as we were talking before, um, Afghans have been known to be the most tolerant, the most respectful, and the most hospitable people in the world. These are the characteristics that actually um, tell what an Afghan is. This is what I was taught. And I know that and because when I see people that have been in Afghanistan 30, 40 years ago, this is the, these are the first words that come out of their mouth. They say Afghans are the most tolerant and respectful people that we have ever made, met. And these people of, are now 70, 80 years old and they tell me about an Afghanistan that I never saw. And to, to be a part of that culture and to be, to be known as an Afghan for that is a great honor. So what has happened? Yes, a huge war. But why do we have to follow the patterns of the war and the residues? And that's what I come back and say, tolerance and respect and coexistence together, separately, but, you know, respectfully, with tolerance, with respect, with, with differences, accepting our differences. Why can't we unite while we accept the differences of the others? The whole world is not supposed to be the same. And coexist becomes very important because... Um, this is the second country that's being launched in. Um, we launched it about a week ago in Germany. And when I go back, it's going to hopefully be uh, going like a domino effect in Europe and then worldwide. And that's why I call upon every single human being, and especially the Afghans, to support this. Because um, it is very, very important. Especially at this time of the, uh, at this time of the um, uh, global turmoil that we are in, uh, we cannot afford to have negative things anymore. Let's turn the page and start thinking positively. I also say that as a Muslim woman, not in my name, what is happening in this world, I will not accept it to be in my name as a Muslim. The criminals that, that act, uh, that, 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 that savagely, uh, you know, brutally murder people in the name of Islam, as a Muslim I will not accept it because that's my name. So coexistence is also, you know, stopping yourself and saying, criminals are criminals. That has nothing to do with religion. So let's stop and go back a couple of steps and come back together, tolerate each other, love the differences, because that's what makes us us. Why is every single woman supposed to be the same? Why is every single man supposed to be the same? That's not what makes us us. It's the differences. This is what we have to do. We have to praise our differences and love what we are differently and accept it live and let others live. This is the biggest message that Coexist brings out. My name is Nahid Shahalimi. Whenever you see me with this role, anywhere in this world, stop me, take a picture with me, spread the word to your families, friends, and through social media, and let's stand up together for coexistence. needs to hear this message. Exactly. 
To coexist by definition means to exist together or at the same time. To exist separately or independently, but peaceably. Soda, the tour of the bar. I am Lisa Stansfield and I stand up for coexistence. We gotta learn to live together and uh, find peace in our world. It's the right thing to do. People helping people is much better than people killing people. Often while remaining rivals or even adversaries, to me, it means world unity. To me, it means respect. To me, it means acceptance. To me, it means praising diversity, regardless of gender, regardless of religion, regardless of color, regardless of nationality, and regardless of race. So, what I have. It is our imperfections that make us what we are, beautiful, colorful, and special. Let's praise our differences in this era of global turmoil by standing up for coexistence. Hi, we're in London, and here it is, in the beautiful city of London. Let's see who you can get for the coexist. Peace for all. My dream is to simply coexist. What do you want to in the future from this uh, project? You want to uh, wide this and uh, uh, give the sign of uh, the other leaders in the world? Yes, and I will be going to the every single leader, even if they say no. <laughs> it doesn't matter because they don't have time. They don't, you know. There's there's a lot of um, other aspects that stop you from getting the signatures of all of these leaders or all of these heads of st uh, heads of villages or personalities that are around the world. Uh, inspirational people are inspirational people. Um, President Karzai, um, it was an honor for me to meet him. A wonderful, wonderful, charismatic leader, I must say. It was the first time that I met him. Uh, but for him to act as the as an ambassador of peace is exactly what we're looking for. We're, in, I mean, I'm not looking for for um, for um, you know people that are promoting um, negativity in this world. You can, I can, I can be very much. Uh, against somebody's opinions or political opinions or whatever kind of opinions that they may have. But for that moment, we're all human beings and we have to support each other by standing up for coexistence and living together in this world. We have to share our world. Ms. Nahid, you uh, <coughs> lived in Pakistan, you lived in Pakistan, uh, Spain, Germany, uh, Canada and US, but your heart still beats uh, for Afghanistan, what is the one thing that makes you proud as an Afghan woman? To be, to be an Afghan, I mean, the first time that I came back um, to Kabul uh, after we had left was um, the day 30 years after my father died. That same day that my father died 30 years ago, I landed um, at the airport. Somehow, for 30 years, although you have a, you have a, um, I have a Canadian passport, and I live in Europe, and I'm very well integrated in the, into the society, I have wonderful friends over there, and I have great supporters as well in the West. Um, somehow, the, the air that you breathe here, and people see you um, as an Afghan, it feels like home you become the first thing, the first paper that is given to you when you leave, and a lot of people don't know this, the first paper that is given to you when you leave, because you leave, we left with, without anything. We left with just the clothes on our, on, on, on our bodies. We had nothing. And the first paper that we got, it said stateless, meaning that you don't belong to any country. And that, I never understood it until I came back uh, four or five years ago here. That's what I knew what it meant to be stateless. Although, like I said, I've, I've lived all over the world and every single place that I've lived, they have welcomed me and with, with great uh, open arms and I have never ever felt, felt like I was a foreigner. But to come to Afghanistan, although 
it's still there's still war and there's not money uh, you know facilities are not the same as over there right now we don't have any electricity in places that we are uh, without generators you don't you can't really um, do much but still the air that I breathe and the, the, the air that I breathe in this country and, and the way that I sleep at night here um, it just feels home there's no other uh, there's no other explanation that I can give you it just simply feels like home and the the older that I get I think maybe it's age. <laughs> uh, the older that I get, um, the more I want to be here. Nice. Uh, you are working on a project with the uh, German uh, national football team. Uh, could you tell us, uh, Charlie, how was your experience at that time? It was great. The fact that they won last year was great, even <laughs> greater. Um, the idea of, of working with the German national soccer team um, came to me um, many, many years ago. Uh, because I was an ex uh, because I played professional sports, I always wanted to do something with sports. So it made it easy for me to work with uh, a team that was in Germany because I live in Germany. And the best uh, sports team in the Germany in, in, in German history is the football team. So um, the football team, most of the football team members, uh, national football team members, they live in Munich because they play for the FC Bayern Munich. And therefore, the idea came to me to approach them and to connect them into the arts and connect them, connect them again to human rights. Because I always say that these personalities attract so much media. I mean, there are so many great football players around the world, especially in Germany. But they were there at the right time, at the right place. They just, a lot of it is, is, is talent, but a lot of it is also luck. So what do you give back? to the society for the wonderful, wonderful opportunities that you get as a professional athlete that the whole world knows. That was the main idea of that. So I connected, I created a concept that was never done. No one had ever, I researched a lot, <laughs> no one had ever painted portraits of these guys in the way that I paint them with wax and had them, and I made them, every single one of them signed their own portrait which became, it was an authentic piece, uh, it became a collector's piece. And then the idea of it was to auction it off online, and all of it went for charity. Because I, I uh, honorary uh, support uh, UNICEF Germany, in Germany myself, and I, and I support them quite a bit for years and years, um, the only project that UNICEF Germany has in Afghanistan is girls' school girls' schools for Afghanistan. So half of the funds that were made out of that project went straight to Afghanistan through UNICEF Germany, and the other half went to the foundation of the DFB, which is the biggest uh, sports federation of the world. The German Federation, a football federation, is the biggest sports federation in the world. So they have a foundation which nobody knew, not a, 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 I didn't even know. So the, the, fun, the other half went to that. But the idea was to get the players involved, to let them know that just one simple signature and one simple you know, five minute of your time where they took a picture with the paintings and they met me. A few times we went, you know, I was there while they were playing and they were training. And just that act made sure that, that so many people were helped in this world. And this was also the idea, to get the personalities involved and give back to society as a, as a, as, as a whole. It doesn't matter where you help, whether it's an Afghan, African, um, you know, um, Asian, uh, whichever continent that you're helping, you're helping a human being. Yeah. And that's, that's the idea of that, that, uh, that, that was the idea of that project. But it was the coolest project I've ever done. It was yeah. such, I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of great, great people. Um, the management behind the team. Um, a lot of people that have great hearts. That's what I meant. And that's when you, when you, when you go uh, and think outside of the box at a concept like that, at a project like that, uh, then you realize that um, if you get the right people involved in the projects, there are so many great people in this world still, yeah. and that's what makes you keeps on keeps you keeps you going and motivates you to do the work that you do because it's not easy what I do. What I do is absolutely not easy to 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 manage the time as a mother, as a as a as an artist. Um, I'm writing a book at the same time of all of this, um, and time wise, you know, and, and you're tired. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie. You are very tired, and often you get so many doors closed in front of you. But you can't just give up. If you don't give up, you will reach your goals. That's the only way. Yeah. As an Afghan woman, uh, what do you think needs to be done to empower women 
in this country, in Afghanistan? I think um, it is extremely important not to forget the men. We have to get the support of the men, um, men personalities, um, sportsmen, athletes that stand up for empowerment of women, side by side. Um, educating the men is as important as educating the women. Um, to give them opportunities, um, of course, giving the same opportunities to women, it's easy to say, but don't think that in the West you have the same opportunities, you don't. It's, there's a lot of things in the West that are not um, really equally done for women either. Um, that is why I always say, do not forget the men. Get the men involved into the empowerment of women projects, which is really, really important. 8th of March is the International Women's Day coming up within, I think it, it's, it's in a week or so. Um, how about thinking out of the box and thinking not the same ordinary? How about getting some of the um, well-known uh, men pers men's personalities of, of Afghanistan to promote the Women's Day? That would be something. It's never been done to actually do something like that because obviously, I mean, we do so much with empowerment of women. There's so many workshops that we give. I personally uh, get involved in a lot of projects that are um, that have to do with individuality of women and things like that. But women do not make the society alone. We make the society alongside our men, 50-50. And that's where we have to really, again, coexist. I cannot put enough pressure on this word. This word means so much. It is such a simple word, but it means so much to every part of our society. And empowerment of women is exactly the same. We've got to get men involved. That's the last question. Uh, what's next? Uh, any more projects no. in the pipeline? <laughs> there are many projects. <laughs> I have to stop myself, actually, because uh, time-wise. Um, right now I'm writing a book about inspirational women of Afghanistan. It's the second in a series of uh, a dozen. The first one was We the Women Germany, and this is the second one, uh, We the Women Afghanistan, parallel to Coexist and parallel to a documentary film that I'm making uh, about a few women, inspirational stories of Afghans. Um, I think my schedule is fully booked until 2016, but I'm sure that I'll find tiny little projects here and there. Um, the development of of um, some sort of a support system for the women athletes in Afghanistan is also extremely important to me, which I think um, will come to place hopefully by the end of this year. Um, tiny little things, I think it'll make tiny little drops will make a huge bucket of water, and that's what I'm um, that's what I'm looking forward to, to the tiny little hopeful successful projects that will motivate me to get other people also involved in these projects. And uh, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see results, I think. Thanks for giving us time uh, to have an interview with you. It was Thank great. You.